what's up guys welcome to part two of the paint series in this video we're going to wrap things up so let's go ahead and get started first let's create our palette we're going to use a method named create rectangle for this this takes four parameters two pairs of x and y coordinates so this works very similar to the create align method but a little bit different let me show you what i mean so just like the create a line method, you have to choose a starting point. Let's go with x equals 10, y equals 10. And let's choose an end point. Let's go with x equals 30, y equals 30. So the create a line method creates a line from here to here. But the create a rectangle method would actually create a rectangle. So let's go enter these values into our method. So for the first pair, we got x is 10, y equals 10. And for the second pair, we got x is 30 and y 30. So this is 10, 10, 30, and 30. All right, now we have a rectangle. Now let's fill it up with some color. Let's make this one black. And let's see what that looks like. All right, there's the rectangle. Now let's create some more. Let's go back to paint. And we want this other rectangle to be right under this one. And we want it to be the same size. But we don't want it to be so close to it. So we're going to give it a separation of 10. But we want it to start off in the same location. So X is going to be 10. But Y is going to be 40. And let's choose an end point. So we know that this one started at 10. Ended at 30. So it's 20 pixels tall. This one starts at 40. 40 plus 20 is 60. So this one's going to end at 60. So X is going to be 30. But y is going to be 60. Let's draw this as well. So for the first pair of coordinates, x equals 10 and y equals 40. And for the second pair, x equals 30 and y equals 60. So let's create a new rectangle. We're just going to copy and paste this. So we know that x equals 10, y equals 40, and for the second pair, x equals 30, and y equals 60. And we're going to change this color to gray. And let's see what this looks like. All right, there's our two squares. Now let's create more of them. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and we'll just change the color and the location of it. All right, let's make this the brown button. I'm going to go with brown four. That's a different shade of that brown. I'm going to show you this website here, sciencesmith.edu. This one has all the colors that Tkinter has to offer. I'll leave a link in the description for this. This is the brown four shade that I just included, but you can go with other ones if you want. So let's make this one the red. This is going to be orange. Yellow. Green. Blue. Purple. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, so we don't have to go back to paint to find the location of these. We could just look at this pattern. So this one started at 10. This is also 10, so this is also going to be 10. This one started at 10, ended at 40, so it went up by 30. So this one's going to go up by 30 as well. So 40 plus 30 is 70. This is going to be 100, 130, 160, 190. 20 and 250 and this one started at 30 this is also 30 so we know all of these are going to be 30 and for the last one it started at 30 ended at 60 so we know that it's going up by 30 so this one's going to be 90 this is going to be 120 150 180 210 240 and 270. 
All right, let's run this. All right, there are the colors. Now let's select any of them. And notice that our ink is not turning that color. That's because we need to attach a bind to these. So when we click it, it turns into that particular color. All right, let's go do that. First, we have to store these in their own unique ID. That way we can attach a bind and we can change that particular ID to whatever color we want it to be. To do this, we're gonna use ID equals. And so now this ID is gonna have this rectangle. Now we're gonna use a bind with this. This one is known as a tag bind. The first parameter is gonna be the ID. When the user clicks on this, we wanna call in a function. We're gonna use Lambda because we're gonna call in a function. We want this function to be called show color. And we wanna send over the color that we want to turn our ink into. This one's gonna be the black. And let's create that function on the top with the rest of our functions. Here under add line, we create a space here. So this one is the show color. We're gonna bring in the new color in here. And let's actually create a global variable as well. Let's call it color. We're gonna set it equal to black. And let's bring it into our function here. And we're gonna set this variable equal to new color. In order for this to work, we have to add one more parameter to this create a line method here. So we can actually change the color of our line by using fill, and we're gonna set it equal to our color that we just created up here. So we set this equal to black. So this line is gonna be black when you draw something. Actually by default, it's already black but well, we just set this to black because we always want it to be black at the beginning. And when you click on our palette, whatever color that you click, let's say that you click red, it's gonna come in through here in new color. And we're gonna set that variable equal to the new color. So now when you draw something, it's gonna be that color. All right. So we're just gonna copy and paste this here into each one of these. Let's change the color. It's gonna be gray. Oh, brown four. Red. Orange. Yellow. green, blue, and purple. And we also have to put these in their own unique ID just like we did with this one. All right, let's run this. And let's test out every color just to make sure it's working correctly. All right, they're all working. Now let's add a button that is gonna let us create a new canvas. At this point, if you wanna draw a new drawing, you have to exit the project in order to erase this. So let's create a button that's gonna let us erase everything and give you a fresh new canvas. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna create a menu bar and when you click on it, it's gonna give you the option to get a new canvas if you want one. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go up to window column configure and we're gonna create it right under here. So let's call it the menu bar. We're gonna use the menu class. We want this menu bar to be located in our window. And we're gonna use .config 
to place it in our window. So in here, we're going to set menu equals to the menu bar we just created. So this gave us a menu bar like this. But when you click on it, I want to be able to select something. So this is known as a sub menu. So let's create that. Let's call it sub menu. We're also going to use the menu class. But instead of putting it on the window, we want it on the menu bar. So in here, we're going to include menu bar. Now let's attach the sub menu to our menu bar. For this, we're going to use a method at cascade. So when you click on the menu bar, this is known as a cascade. So we're going to add that. We want the menu bar to display file. And let's actually attach that sub menu in here. So if we run this like this, it's going to give us the menu that says file. When you click on it, this is the cascade. Now let's add the sub menu option in here. And that's the one that's going to say new canvas. When you click on that, we want to call in a function and we want the sub menu to display new canvas. And we're going to call in a function when the user clicks on it. Let's call it new canvas. Let's create it up here with the rest of our functions. And here we're going to call on a method named delete. So this is going to delete everything that is on our canvas. We also have to include this special keyword all. All right, let's run this. And let's draw something first. All right, now let's actually test this out. And it works, but it also deletes our palette and we don't want it to do that. So we're going to have to fix that. So the thing about this delete method is that it doesn't just delete the drawing. It deletes literally everything that you have on your canvas. One way to fix this is by placing our palette in a function. That way we're able to call that function as soon as we delete everything that is on the canvas. So we're going to place all of this in a function. Let's call it display palette. And let's end it all of this. All right, now it's in a function. Now we're going to have to make a function call to this function. So as soon as you run this project, this function is going to be called and our palette is going to appear on our canvas. But as soon as you click on the new canvas button to basically delete everything on the canvas, it's going to delete it again. So we have to call this function again after we delete everything from our canvas. So let's go back to our new canvas function here. And let's call on that function that we just created, display palette. Ooh, I don't know if you've noticed, but our canvas, the, the color on it is not white. It's like light gray. So we want to make it white. To do this, just go over to your canvas and add a color to it. So we're going to use background and we're going to make it white. All right, let's run it again. And our canvas is actually white. So let's test out the button again, make sure that it doesn't delete our palette. And it didn't. Now, one last thing that I want to do is notice this line here. I don't like how this line looks. So let's get rid of that. For this, we're going to go into sub menu here and we're going to add tear off equals zero. So it shouldn't be there anymore. And nope, it's not there. And that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you guys watching the paint series and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.